Here at Parks and Rands Robotics, we reassess the challenge from ground up and work diligently to synthesize an overhaul system for ERC. We use our extensive experience from the past two competitions to create test scenarios that are true analogs to ERC settings. We conducted major changes to each subsystem while keeping and improving what worked well from last year. We are proud to present our most reliable and competition-ready rover to date. This year, the mechanical team has worked hard to reduce weight, improve all-terrain capability, and make controlling the arm more intuitive. Our unique SCAR arm design has been changed to a cylindrical configuration, which uses a linear axis in place of one of the rotational joints. By having a linear axis on the end of the arm instead of a rotational one, the operator can intuitively move the end effector relative to their own point of view. This allows the operator to easily manipulate the controls during the equipment servicing task, as well as pick up objects easily during extreme retrieval. Like with the SCAR configuration, the cylindrical configuration uses a vertical axis, which is useful for drilling operations during the science tasks. Our other major focus this year has been the wheels. The wheels that were previously used were rigid and transmitted far too much force into the rest of the suspension. As well, they lack the traction required to effectively traverse the obstacles in the extreme retrieval task. To solve these problems, our members have been working hard on several prototypes of highly deformable wheels, using methods such as flexible 3D printing and casting rubber tires. These methods have resulted in a marked improvement in ride smoothness and a drastic reduction in forces seen by the rest of the suspension components. As well, the traction provided by the rubbery materials allows the wheels to climb large obstacles like those found in the extreme retrieval task, taking full advantage of our unique double lambda suspension design. The chassis of the rover has been completely redesigned to be much smaller thanks to the new, more compact controls architecture. It still uses a core load-bearing frame, but with a much smaller and lighter outer shell for housing all the electronic components. The smaller size allows other components, especially the arm, to be much more compact and stable during operation. This year, we have gone with a modular, peer-to-peer -peer based control system. For long-range communications, we utilize a combination of 900 MHz and 2.4 GHz radios connected in parallel. This allows elements of our control system to be hot-swapped between links, providing fallbacks in case of catastrophic comms loss. This ensures the reliability of drive commands while maintaining the ability to send large amounts of data. Our cameras utilize a low bitrate WebRTC transport system, which transmits a tested six camera feeds simultaneously over our current communication system. WebRTC based connections provide us with low latency feeds in addition to high levels of encoding. This should give the driver of the rover a complete picture of what is going on without saturating the current rover throughput limits. Further work is being done to add overlays and visualizations of rover arm movements, compasses, and IMU data to the camera feeds to continue to give the driver a quick visual reference. This year, our power system has been custom designed to allow for reduced weight and added electrical safety features. For the autonomous task, our team has taken an agile development approach by first setting goals for the development of simple autonomous processes. We will start with a wander and find system that utilizes a mixture of GPS and vision-based systems to identify and find waypoints. We are currently testing this system and will be focusing on perfecting and improving upon it over the next few months. Additionally, we have created a separate test platform to prototype the autonomous operations. This allows us to reserve the main rover for drive testing while using the secondary platform for all autonomous operations. With the science mission being moved entirely onto the rover, the science team had to alter our approach. After investigating several life detection tests, including our rapid DNA, RNA, and protein extractions, we decided to go with a highly sensitive ATP test. ATP is found ubiquitously among living organisms and is responsible for facilitating essential, non-spontaneous biochemical reactions. Our soil samples are deposited into a solution of cell lysis buffer and bioluminescent reactants. If microbiota are present, its ATP readily reacts to emit photons. A calibrated optical sensor tells us if this reaction occurs, indicating the presence of microbiota in the soil. We opted for a modular, carousel-like science console design capable of completely isolating up to six soil samples. Our augers also act as a high-speed vortex to adequately mix soil samples with our bioluminescent solution. To further prevent cross-contamination of our samples, we designed a seamless mechanism to replace used boring augers with sterilized ones between soil acquisitions. Our focus on modularity and simplicity has yielded huge dividends when it comes to system integration and testing. Already, this year's drivetrain has more drive hours than all of our previous rovers combined, and we plan to continue testing to fine-tune communication and autonomous capabilities. We are very confident we will perform well at URC 2019, and we look forward to seeing you there. <laughs>